In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down this 3D artwork that I made a year ago, and it's probably one of my favorite artworks, personally. If you've been following me on social media for a while, you will know, and you are probably familiar with this piece. It was also promoted on Crypto.com for a while, as for the initial NFT drop that I did with them, so I thought it would be nice to share the thought process and uh, the reasoning behind my decisions when I created this artwork. So this video's main focus will not be on the tech technical aspect as much as on why I did this, right? I personally think it's a lot more valuable than showing you just the technical aspect. Yes, you can do it. This is how you do it. But I think there are channels who are specialized in that and they do a much better job than me. And I've said in one of my Skillshare classes that I think anyone has the ability to learn the technical side, but not everyone has the vision or that unique touch that makes them their own art. It just stand out from the crowd. So I think the real challenge arises when you want to think for yourself, think more more creatively and in this video I'm gonna exactly show you how I did that on my part so you can think for yourself and create your own unique ideas when it's comes to your creative workflow so without further ado I think I talked a lot <laughs> uh, let's get started we're inside blender and we have the scene here I'm just gonna bring it bring myself here I might be too small to see but who cares it's all about the scene now this is the scene that I finalized for that uh, artwork. And if we come here, this is the render viewport. Um, just click on the render viewport here. As you can see, this is the exact same scene as you see here. So I'm gonna break down one by one exactly on how I did it. First thing I wanna start with is the car. So let's go ahead and just hide all of these and just go to my world, add some light to it so you can see what's going on. And here we have the car. Basically, I got this car, I believe on Sketchfab, but I'm not sure if I have the link yet because it was like over a year ago. The reason I got this car, as you might see, I'm a sucker for classic sport cars and I've been using them pretty much all the time in my artworks. And this was one of the reason I started learning 3D, honestly, just to use these classic car, because I, I cannot afford it in real. I cannot go on every car dealership and rent a car for the whole day and shoot, you know, back in photography day. So that's what I love about 3D. You have like unlimited assets that you can get all over the internet. So this car was free, I believe I got it over Sketchfab. Now, the only thing I did here I wanted to show you guys is that backlights here. What I did was I manually selected out um, so if I go here it, to edit mode, I need to turn those on. So what I did here, I manually selected these faces and meshes here around the backlight. Now, you have to take some time to kind of like select all of them. And then you press P and then you can easily separate by selection. And once you do that, it will come over to your material. You'll first delete the other material and then create a new one. You can just... I did not name my materials back then, so I'll just write down backlight. And then you can easily, here on the shader tab, add an emission to the surface, change the color to red. That's what backlight looked like. And the strength was around 38. I think it was quite a lot, but I wanted to reflect on the ground. Now, speaking of the ground or the floor, for the ground, I basically wanted something more like of a concrete, but also kind of reflective. So you can see the backlight on the ground, which reflects legs quite cool and i got this concrete raw from the blender add-ons here you just have to go ahead write concrete and you have a bunch of options and probably yeah this concrete raw by bumpkin cz pretty simple and then what i did was because the plane is is kind of distant i used two array i believe yes so i used two arrays Basically, it was like this. It was just one plain surface here, uh, but I used two arrays to extend on both sides. Um, so here first was first factor X was minus uh, one. And then on the second one is uh, the Y axis. I just had to set it to one. And then you can add pretty much as much as count so you can extend it. That's probably the best way to do it. And that's it for the floor. Basically, that's what I did. And uh, here we have the camera. The camera is not as symmetrical as usual that I do, but I want it to be just like on this side. I didn't do much with the camera. I just had to put the focal length on 35 millimeter. There's no depth of field. 
and pretty much that's it the next thing i want to talk about is the grass here so basically the grass was definitely quite helpful to create this cinematic depth to it so it also separates the foreground from the actual light here which we're gonna get to it in a bit so the grass was quite simple i got it from botanic i remember um yes it's called grass decorative i believe this is from the previous version so i'm not, I'm not sure if you will get the same style but this is a very simple one it was the first one i chose you might not get the exact result if you try it out again but you will get something quite similar now that's for the grass the next thing i want to talk about is something that i'm actually really excited about which is the png that i I used as my character now a lot of people don't know this but this is more like of a secret that i use and i'm actually working on a bundle of pngs that i have created myself so stay tuned for that but what i did basically i just got a picture from unsplash i just cut out the the whole background i made the png completely black as a silhouette a reflection of silhouette and then all you have to do is just file import images as planes and you're good to go easy as that this is one of the probably the, the best technique to add silhouette characters to your scenes and they are quite unique because you don't always get them on 3d platforms that sell 3d assets they all look alike uh, especially the free ones i see so many artworks that have same models over and over so this is a way to stand out uh, in my opinion and now let's talk about the light here basically what i did for the light something very simple i don't even have to explain i guess i created a plane um and then i just rotated it in the direction of this you know this will be terrible because you get the point so and all i had to do create a new material and then add an emission to it and that emission will be linked to surface and then basically set to an orangish color around here so basically that's what i did for this one as well pretty simple pretty easy nothing too complicated about it but the tricky part here was now if i bring down the strength on the on the world this is how it looks like right now the trickiest part was i wanted to make it more glowy and with cycle you don't have that option as you have it with eve real-time engine so what i did i created two walls um <laughs> as you can see it makes a huge difference it's way reflective and it has a very nice glowy look to it here and what i did with these materials of these walls i believe i used quixel to get one of those imperfections surface this one is iron i really like the look that it gets from the light collapse here so that way it creates lights within the material like as you can see the, this this side of it once i try that out i was just blown away and lastly which is something I always, pretty much always do, is to add the fog. I mean, all I did was to just create a cube, a resize it, adjust it depending on the distance that we have here, and just make it a bit higher. And all I did was just use a volume sc uh, scatter, pretty simple one, density to 0 0.102, and that's it. I didn't change anything else. Um, and if you want to get into more about how to properly create fogs, I would highly recommend you to check out my previous video. And also feel free to check out my fog pack. Link will be in the description. So guys, that's it. That's pretty much what I did. And then I rendered it. I went over Photoshop. Um, no, actually Lightroom first and then Photoshop. And this is the final result. So after slight adjustment with coloring and also adding the film dusty look that also a pack that i have all of these things that i've mentioned links will be in the description so yeah i hope you enjoyed how this piece was made and learned something new along the way if you are interested in learning how i approach my projects and get some insight about my creative process then i would encourage you to check out my skillshare classes if you like this video i would highly appreciate if you do all the good stuff, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.